Hello. So I went through all of my drugstore products and selected the products that I would choose if I had to keep only one drugstore product to use from each category for the rest of my life. This is a really hard video to do because these products are not necessarily my favorite products. It turns out that when you're selecting products to use for the rest of your life, you have to take into consideration different occasions, different weather conditions, and products that will age along with you. So some of these products I may have never mentioned on my channel before. They may be surprises to you. Some of them you have probably heard me mention several times before. This is kind of a part two to a video that Gemma from Pampered Wolf and I did a couple of weeks ago. That was a mixture of all price points where we both had a few drugstore products in it, but we both had a lot of requests to do a full drugstore version, so that's what we're doing. And for those of you who may not be familiar with Gemma, her channel is called Pampered Wolf. I know you guys love discovering channels that provide truly valuable information and that are just genuine and down to earth, and that's exactly what her channel is. She's from the UK, so she has this fantastic accent. I've been watching her channel a long time. I personally love her channel because her videos are very well-rounded. She gives great makeup advice and reviews, but she's also an esthetician, so she gives great skincare advice as well. I just find that I get something out of her videos every time I watch them, and I know you will too. And she's someone who I not only enjoy watching her videos, but since we connected, we've been talking all the time, and she's someone that I can call a true friend. She's just a true, genuinely sweet human being. So definitely go check out her video after you finish here. Tell her I said hi and subscribe to her channel if you're not already. And if you came over from Gemma's channel or if this is your first time here or if you've just been watching my videos and you haven't hit that subscribe button for whatever reason, I would love it if you would consider hitting that subscribe button before the end of this video and becoming part of the family. All right, let's get into the first drugstore product. I have a few drugstore or affordable foundations foundations that I could have chosen. And in the end, I went with one that actually has two versions. There's a version that's for normal to dry skin. There's also a version that's for combination or oily skin. I have combination oily skin. So I chose the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless Foundation. And the reason why I chose this is because it works so incredibly well for my skin in every weather condition. I live in a very hot and humid climate roughly eight to nine months out of the year. So I need something that is not going to slide off of my oily T-zone. It's not gonna make me look very shiny, but it's also gonna look very lovely on the skin and not heavy or too makeup-y. I wanted something I could also get versatile coverage out of that I could wear for every day or I could, you know, build it up and wear it for special occasions as well. But I could also wear this in the winter months when my skin leans a little more normal and it wouldn't look dry. You know, if I needed to mix this with a moisturizer, I could do that, but I've really not needed to do that. This is just a great no-fail foundation. And by the way, I do have all of these products that I'm talking about, almost all of them because there's a couple of lip products, but I do have all of them on, on my face today. This is the foundation that I have on. I just think it always looks lovely and beautiful. And this is my choice that I would choose if I had to choose one for the rest of my life. Now, if you had asked me about a primer a couple of months ago, I probably would have had a very, very difficult time choosing one because I've never really been truly thrilled with a drugstore primer. I just felt like some of them dried my skin out if I used them too many days in a row or they, I don't know, they were just okay. But over the past couple of months, I've found a couple that could have actually been options. And the one that stands out to me the most, I actually haven't talked about on my channel yet. This is the first time I was looking for the the right video to put this in and this one is perfect because it really just ticks all of my boxes. This is the Revlon Photo Ready Pore Reducing Primer. I actually just talked about another Revlon primer that I think is really great. So I don't know if all their primers are fantastic or what, but I really like them both. I also have a Neutrogena stick primer I've been liking a lot. The reason why I chose this one is because it does a great job of reducing the appearance of my pores while controlling the oil in my T-zone. I find a lot of primers do one or the other really well, but it's hard to find a primer that does both. 
I've just really been enjoying this a lot. It doesn't feel heavy on my skin. It's compatible with every foundation I've tried it with. It feels good on my skin. It doesn't break out my sensitive skin either or make my normal combination areas on the perimeter of my face feel dry or look dry. So this has been a big surprise winner for me for sure. And this is the one that I would choose if I had to choose one for the rest of my life. Let's move on to concealer. I'm pretty sure a lot of you know what this is gonna be if you saw my video where I talked about my concealer powder combination I've been loving. I mean, I pretty much did a dedicated video to this drugstore concealer. This is the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. I think this is a fantastic under eye concealer if you have dry, textured under eyes that you're not wanting to emphasize the dryness and the texture. I do find a little bit of this goes a long way. Every now and then I go a little heavy handed with it and it cakes up very, very easily if I'm not careful. I have to go in with a tiny amount and just build where I need it. If I apply it like that, it is just so beautiful. It also conceals on the face really well. It's not too heavy looking. It's just a really pretty concealer. You know, here on my channel, I'm really big on under eye correctors because you have to conceal the discoloration before you actually cover up everything or else your concealer can kind of appear gray or things can just look kind of not right under your eye. So I did give a corrector in my original video. So I'm going to give you one here, but I have to give you a disclaimer. I have not really found a drugstore corrector that I'm 100% thrilled with and that I could 100% say I would keep for the rest of my life because I find all of them a tad dry. None of them are as hydrating as the higher end correctors that I use. So just know that. But that said, I would pick the NYX Color Correcting Concealer Palette for the simple fact that out of all of them, this is one of the ones that is the least drying and you have various shades to choose from so that if you have multiple things you want to correct, you can do so. You can do your under eyes, you can do various things on your face as well. So I think this gives the most options, the biggest bang for your buck as far as a corrector goes. Now, some of you will probably be thinking that I am going to pick this e.l.f. Halo Glow Powder because I've been talking about how wonderful it is to set with as well as use as a finishing powder. However, I mentioned in my original video that I did take into consideration with these products the travel factor. If you wanted to travel at any point, how portable were all of these? Plus the powder I also am going to be using as a touch-up powder. You know, if I blot during the day, if I want to touch up with powder to cut the shine, and I don't like using a loose powder for that, but I do love this powder. So in my original video, this is the powder I chose and I'm sticking with it for drugstore. So just note that any drugstore product that was in that original video will also be in this video and I go into more detail in the original video. I'm just going to kind of touch on them very quickly in this video since I already gave you that information and the link for that video will be down below as well as up in the corner, that little I button. And you can get to that video that way and hear more information on it and the other products. So this is the number seven Lift and Luminate. And it is a finishing powder, but I think it's actually great as a setting powder. Now the shade that I have is light medium. If I was going to keep this truly for the rest of my life to use it for all three applications, setting, finishing, and touching up, I would get it in the lightest shade, which is the shade lighter than this, because I don't like to set under my eyes with anything that's tinted like this and the lightest shade would appear as translucent. Just know that, but this is a great powder. It gives a beautiful airbrush finish. It's just lovely and I think it would perform all three functions beautifully. This bronzer may come as a surprise to you guys. I don't know. I've talked about it before here on my channel and I think it's just absolutely lovely and I love the pigment that it gives as well and I feel like it is universal even if it's in the summer or winter for my skin tone. This is the Physician's Formula Bronze Booster and I have the medium dark shade. My skin is light medium. I have warm neutral undertones. The quality of this is really great. I don't have to tap off my brush at all before I go in with this product. It applies so beautifully. I can use a lighter hand. I can build up the pigment with a heavier hand and it just always looks really beautiful no matter if I'm going for a more sun-kissed look or just a lighter 
just kind of more more golden healthy look it's very versatile it's not too light it's not too dark it's not too red it's not too yellow it's just kind of the perfect tone for my skin tone and I would pick this for my life I just think it would work perfectly now I also haven't mentioned the blush that I have on either because I got it somewhat recently but as soon as I got it my first thought was how universal the shade was, how many looks it would go with, and just, just how flattering it was. This is the Revlon Powder Blush in the shade Apricute. I mean, how cute is that name? I feel like it looks pinker on screen than it actually is. I, I'm hoping you can see that on my cheeks. There is a subtle sheen to it, but it's very flattering. It doesn't emphasize anything bad. It just gives a nice healthy glow. And I feel like it's that neutral pink. It's cut with, I guess, a little bit of apricot to make it a little bit more neutral. And I feel like no matter what type of look you have, whether it's warm or cool or dressy or casual, this blush, would complement it beautifully. And my highlighter, I had so many out trying to figure out which one I was going to choose. And, you know, I kind of debated about this in the other video too. My thought process was that I wanted one that was a little bit more subtle that I could build up and it just would never emphasize anything that was bad. And I would just rather have something that was a little more finely milled because of that. So this is the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. I know that's probably not very exciting. It's not one of those super glowy, you know, see me from the moon kind of highlighters, but it just gives exactly what I feel would be flattering for work or a lunch with a friend nighttime. It's flattering on me now. It'll be flattering on me 20 years from now. It's just a really, really pretty, beautiful highlight. You know, and the point of highlight is to bring out our features. It's not to overpower them. And that's what I feel this highlighter is really, really good at. In my original video, I gave you a cream shadow in addition to an eyeshadow palette because I often talk about one and done eyeshadows, cream shadows, here on my channel and I just thought it was appropriate for me to do that. So this is also a fairly new product for me. I don't think that I've talked about these yet, but I've been so impressed at how flattering these are. And this is another category that in my opinion is very, very hard to get right at the drugstore. I find a lot of drugstore cream eyeshadows, pot eyeshadows, stick eyeshadows to dry out quickly if they're in the pot or they emphasize texture or dryness on the lids or they just don't perform well throughout the day. There's really only a couple that I think are on par with higher end products. And I do think the CoverGirl Exhibitionist lid paints are really, really great. I have been impressed with these. I've been wearing these in various shades a ton. And I chose the color Sorry Sweetie as the shade that I would keep for the rest of my life because it's kind of a pinky champagne that can go from day to night. It can be worn for any occasion. It's flattering. I have other shades that I've been wearing a lot, but you know, I'm only supposed to choose one. So that's what this is. It wears really well. It lasts throughout the day. It doesn't emphasize any of the texture on my lids. I have been really, really loving these. I forgot to share my brow product in the last video and I had to put it in the description box. I just totally forgot my brow pencil was in the other room and I am someone that has very patchy brows and I need to use a brow pencil way more than a brow gel or something like that. And for a long time now I have been using and loving this NYX Precision Brow Pencil in the shade Ash Brown. When my hair was a little bit lighter I used the shade Taupe but this shade seems to work really well for me now. The pencil is shaped like a dash. It's a long elongated. It allows me to do my brows very, very quickly, but it always looks, you know, pretty natural. I just find that this is a no-fail brow pencil for me, no matter what I'm doing, and I can do them really, really quickly. Now, I don't think this is cheating for eyeliner because this is how the eyeliners come, but Physicians Formula has a trio, and I think that they have different shades, but it's three different finishes of these eyeliners. There's a matte, a satin, and a shimmer in every set. I have the brown set. That's the set I would choose. It's a deep brown, and these stay 
on. They don't budge, they don't irritate my eyes, but they glide on and give me enough time to smudge them out. They're really, really great, especially for the price point. So this is what I would choose. I mean, it would give me some finish options and I really just like having a deep brown. It just allows me to, you know, have a shade that I can wear with pretty much anything. So I did talk about this mascara in my original video and how it's a great dupe for the Urban Decay Perversion Waterproof. This is the CoverGirl exhibitionist waterproof. This would be my choice for mascara. Now it can be kind of wet in the tube at first. So just depending on the type of tube you get, I find that it can be kind of inconsistent. It may be a little bit better a couple weeks after you have it open. In the meantime, I just scrape it off diligently if I get a tube that's like that. But this is the mascara that I have on today. I have very, very wimpy, straight, invisible lashes until I curl them. And I needed a waterproof formula, not only to help hold my curl, but also because, you know, this is for life. This is for every occasion. I might be getting wet. I might be crying. So I had to think about those things. So that is where this came in. This is just one of my favorite drugstore formulas that builds length and volume and holds the curl. It just, it does everything. Okay, it's time for eyeshadow palettes and then we'll get to lips. So I will tell you right now that if this ColourPop Dream Street palette had not been discontinued, this is the palette I would have chosen. I just think it was a huge mistake for ColourPop to discontinue this palette. I freaking love it and it's gone. So this would have been my choice. Just know that. So I don't know if I just don't have the right drugstore palettes, but I found that I ran into a couple of issues with drugstore palettes that I didn't run into with high-end palettes. They kind of only give me part of what I need. You know, I love this Maybelline Lemonade Craze palette, but you know, it's really warm and it has nothing in it but, you know, warm summery brown tones. I can round it out with the Soda Pop palette, but you know, you need two. I adore this Wet n Wild Comfort Zone palette. I really almost picked this, but... <laughs> You know, it's, it's, it's pretty muted, I guess. It rounds out nicely with this one, but again, you gotta have two palettes to round it out. I just felt like that happened a few times or else the palettes were all neutrals or all pops of color. If you guys have a drugstore palette that has some pops of color as well as neutrals, let me know, but I just really don't. So my two eyeshadow palette finalists are the ColourPop Bare Necessities palette and the Milani Bold Obsessions palette. Now there's drawbacks to both of them and there's positives to both of them. So if you look at the ColourPop palette, it's a great neutral palette. I've talked about this several times on my channel. I get frustrated because it's out of stock a lot and sometimes when I've talked to you guys about it it's been out of stock. I love that you have cool as well as warm tones in here. You have some plum shades and then over here you've got some shades that I really like to wear in the summer. There are shades in here that I love to line with and I can line with them beautifully. It pretty much gives me every shimmer shade that I like to use. Silvery shades, taupey shades, champagnes, golds, pink tones, everything that I want really. The quality is great. The shadows blend beautifully. There is some kick up in the pan, but if you tap your brush off, you get minimal fallout and what you do get dusts away easily. It doesn't spread all over your face. And if you use your finger to apply the shimmer shades, they turn out beautifully. I just, I love this palette, but I also love this palette. I think the quality is great in this. You get a little more variety as far as the color, just because you get that pop of cranberry and you get that blue. I mean, you have a couple of rows here of shimmers to choose from, and you know, you've got some mattes, not as many. So the versatility isn't quite here like it is with the ColourPop. So that would be the drawback for me is just, if I wanted to wear neutral looks, it's, it's pretty much the same. So in the end, I did go with the ColourPop Bare Necessity. This isn't gonna be as easy to travel with for me. So my thought process here is that in the event that ColourPop Bare Necessities is out of stock, I've got a backup with the Milani Bold Obsessions. I've got something to go to. So, you know, that's the reality that you're facing with ColourPop because they're just infamous for being out of stock of things, right? I wanted a nude lip liner that I could wear with pretty much anything that wasn't too pink or too brown. And the one that I chose is the Milani Understatement Lip Liner in the shade Nude Entrance. I don't think we hear enough about this formula and I think it is fantastic for a drugstore lip liner formula. It glides on beautifully. It lasts 
phenomenally on the lips. It feels good. It doesn't feel drying. And this shade is just perfect. It's kind of uh, my lips, but better if my lips were a little bit deeper, you know? So I chose this because I could wear it alone and throw a balm on top and I would really, really enjoy that look. Or I could wear it underneath the lip colors that I chose and it would work perfectly. So in my original video, I did a, kind of a lip set with a lip gloss, a lipstick, and a lip liner. And I'm going to do that again in this video. So my lipstick is the Milani lipstick in the shade Nude Cream. I've talked about this on my channel plenty of times. A lot of you have bought it and you love it as much as I do. In one of my dupes videos, I actually showed that this was pretty spot on to Tom Ford Pink Dusk and Bite Beauty Meringue, which is now discontinued. So if you like that just beautiful pinky nude shade, then you will like this. And of course I chose this because I just really like a pinky nude, no matter what type of eye I'm doing. I just think it's really flattering on my skin tone, my coloring. And so this is the lip that I chose because I think for me, it'll be good for any occasion. If you saw my original video, the lip gloss I am picking will be no surprise to you. This is the Lifter Gloss from Maybelline. These are such a beautiful formula. They have substance, but they're not goopy or sticky. They remind me a lot of the Fenty Gloss Bombs in terms of scent and formula, just everything. I have the Topaz one on over the other lip products right now. I'm gonna put the amber shade on and show you what that looks like. So the amber is the shade that I would actually pick. It just gives a little bit of a warmer, kind of a peachy nude tone to whatever look I have going on. And I think I would like to have that versatility. It also has a little bit more of an opaque look to it than the Topaz. And I think I'd like to have that option in my, my tiny little lip collection I have here that I'm gonna be using for the rest of my life. Now, if you missed my original video that I did a couple weeks ago that included all price points, I'll have it linked here for you. And I'll have Gemma's channel as well as her two videos linked down below. Be sure and check those out as well. I hope you enjoyed this. It was a lot of fun to do. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!